Two guys who love to talk fantasy baseball. Three and two. This is Full Count Fantasy Baseball. In a year that has been so improbable, the impossible has happened. Here are your improbable hosts, Dean Millard and Jordan Blundell. Presented by Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports. Get in the game where you own the game. Well, here we are. The band is back together again. Uh, Jordan Blundell joining me. I'm Dean Millard, and this is Full Count Fantasy Baseball, presented by Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports and broadcast on the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network. And good to see you again, my man. Uh, you broke the cardinal rule last week. You let real life baseball get in the way of fantasy baseball, and and you couldn't make it on this show. So you'll you'll be fined. There'll there'll be a fine for that, and uh, some sort of uh, maybe you have to take the team out for lunch or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta pick up the check on my visa for all the big league guys on my fantasy team. <laughs> Do you know, man? I got the air air conditioner set up. I'm sharing sharing a space with the better half, so I'm in the kitchen today and. Did you know the scorcher that's coming our way in Edmonton? Oh yeah. Oh 30 man. So we've got five degrees yeah. on the weekend. I don't even know what that's gonna feel like here. I mean, twenty twenty four plus gets hot. Um, and then we're out burdened, so people can make fun of us for that. But thirty five? That's gonna feel crazy here. Yeah, especially uh, outside, you know, like you, you, you wanna be able to get outside and enjoy it at some times, but you've got to be really careful at those temperatures, you're going to be coaching baseball. And, you know, th anybody watching us right now in Arizona is just laughing at us because <laughs> unless you're the Diamondbacks and you get to play in that beautiful stadium, most teams are playing outdoors in Arizona, are they not? Yeah, my uh, my pitching coach this summer, Dino, uh, born and raised in Phoenix, and he's got some good stories of, of you got to be careful your cleats don't melt on the field. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, let's th get things going uh, from a fantasy perspective. And to do that, uh, let's take a look at uh, the games today, particularly the early game, and we'll get going with your question of the day. This is a serious message. Peace and love, peace and love. When you take a look at the earliest of games today, and, and we got an early start today because uh, I've gotten an appointment that I, I have to, well, I won't have any internet after 10 o'clock because my internet is being fixed. So that's why we had to get this show uh, out and early. But the early game today is the Royals and the Yankees. So if you can have just one player between the Yankees or the Royals for fantasy purposes, what player are you taking? In, in in past years, this was probably an easy decision. Not so easy anymore, I don't think. Oh, yeah, Dino, I'm interested to think what, what the easy decision for you would be, but I'm going with my guy, Whit Merrifield, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. Dual positional designation. He's a second base outfielder, so already you know how much I love that. Yeah. And then on top of that, the, the guy hits – he steals bases. There's OPS there. There's slugging there. There's doubles there. Um, he's a stats column filler. And, and those are the kind of guys I want on my fantasy team. Unfortunately, I don't have wit on, on either of my fantasy teams, but that's the guy I want. You know, I love the guys that can rip bags and split gaps. Of course, and play a bunch of different positions. I've had Merrifield yeah. on different teams. Uh, Jonathan VR in in New York is a guy like that. Um, what's the guy in with the the Angels that I I always get? He plays second base, and uh, um, geez, the name is uh, kind of uh, escaping me. I'll find it right here. David Fletcher is another guy, yeah. and, and last year David Fletcher. Now he's not a big power guy or anything like that, but he is. Uh, fairly consistent, and he was qualified in the outfield uh, last year. The easy choice I was thinking about at one point was Mariano Rivera. Like, that guy was just automatic for saves, right? Like, for the Yankees, they had some great players, but d do you ever remember Mariano Rivera slumping or, or being, like, uh, you know, going more than a week struggling in fantasy? He was, and in real life, really, he was great. So that was kind of the easy choice. There's been some great players. 
over over time. You know, you go back in the day, if you were playing fantasy, George Brett would have been a probably pretty easy decision. Uh, but it, it, it's it's nice, and we're going to talk about a, uh, a royal in a, in a little bit. But I want to say big thanks to our title sponsor, Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports, the most realistic, highest stakes platform out there. Whatever UFFS builds, mimics nearly everything about that league it's based on. Right now, hockey is in the playoffs. It's the Klein Cup, and our prize pool is 31K. It's progressive, and each of the next two years in hockey starts at 10K, plus a $1,000 entry. Did I mention this is high stakes? An expansion franchise sold for 51000 U.S., and baseball is on the way. The ultimate fantasy league baseball will be the next best thing to owning an actual major league team. This is fantasy sports on the blockchain where real-life players will become NFTs. Check it out, www.uffsports.com, and you can find out all of the pertinent and very cool information here's what we have on the lineup today we have our headlines uh, what's making news in fantasy baseball jordan will take a look at best bullpens i'll throw baseball thunderdome going with some national league pitchers today we'll tell you how you can win the waiver wire top three in a division prospect peak and we'll let you know just how you can rule your league and here is how you can get in touch with us you talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? Then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. You know, that could change very shortly. I am the only one here. Well, Trish is here. My wife is in the in in the other room, but after July 1st in Alberta, we're going to be a lot more we're going to be able to do a lot more things, and that means you could be getting out back here in studio, man. We could actually watch some ball games together, man. That's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. And here's how you can get in touch with us right now. We are live on the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network. You can tweet at us at Duck Millard, at Jordan Blundell 4. If you have a fantasy question, if you have a comment or anything about what we're talking about, uh, please uh, chime in on Twitter right now. If you'd like to email fullcountfantasybaseball at gmail.com, UFSN at uffsports.com if you would like to get your show on the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network and fullcountfantasybaseball.ca as well as uffsports.com. Uh, okay, uh, before we uh, quickly get into the headlines and, and everything that's going, uh, you guys had a wild game. Congratulations on being on the field. That must feel so cool, again, to be actually coaching a game, you know, being out there on third third base to make, you know, the windmill when somebody's coming around. All that stuff must be great. But what a wild game you had. A 2-1 game until the sixth inning turns into a 24-10 game at the end. What the heck happened? Yeah, Dino, it's, uh, <clears throat> their guy was really good on the mound to start, and we were grinding and battling, and um, we were able to start to kind of put some things together right at the end of his outing, you know, pitch count, and, and you know, he get a certain amount of pitches. So we, we finally got to the end of, of his dominance on us. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple of good things happened for us, honestly. They made a mistake defensively, and that – that could, huge swing it was a double play ball that that instead of getting two outs they got zero outs and then 12 runs later uh it was a big one so uh, we ended up putting up a couple of uh pretty big scores in back-to-back -back innings um just a little bit of relief you know and not having to face their their number one guy there and, and our our hitters took advantage of the mistakes so uh, really happy about that you know you, you never want to see a score like that in, in the game but um, it is what it is, and, and mm -hmm. I know that program and that team, um, they're pretty good. So it's kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime type thing for those guys. Same thing happened in the Dodger game last night. Uh, Matt Beatty couldn't track one down, uh, and it led to, to Justin Turner having to look back the runner at second and then not get the runner at first, and it led to a big inning for the Padres. And it's amazing in baseball how just one uh, error or misplay or whatever it might be uh, can lead to such a domino effect uh, effect down the road. So uh, that is definitely uh, baseball. All right, let's get to the headlines. Uh, I can't. By the way, uh, we'll be the hecklers in Sherwood Park tonight, Trish and I. So we got our tickets. Perfect. 
for the game. So uh, get ready to be heckled uh, like you've never been heckled. Like, you know that guy <laughs> that used to be behind your dugout? I, I'm going to uh, yeah. go after I'm going to try to be like that guy. But anyway, let's get to uh, some headlines. And, and we've got a sticky situation in Major League Baseball in more ways than one going on right now, Jordan. Umpires are checking uh, pitchers. Joe Girardi calling out Max Scherzer the other night and then and then challenging the pitcher was just absolutely childish. And the real concern, you know, for fantasy GMs is will their pitchers regress or even worse, get hurt? Uh, you know, Glasnow already blaming this situation on his injury. Are we going to see more guys? Marcus Stroman had to come out of his start the other day. On the flip side... Once players kind of readjust to what might have been regular spin rates for some guys, and we're seeing it already, offense is going up. Uh, so, so now all we have to do is uh, just get back to banning the shift, and and we'll be all okay. So now that we seem to have this uh, working through this uh, sticky situation, you'll be able to comment on things as we go. George Springer is back. Francisco Lindor was the biggest disappointment for me. He's actually starting to warm up. Three home runs, seven RBIs in his last five games. He's still not hitting for average, but the new biggest disappointment for me is George Springer, and it's it's mostly due to injuries, limiting to just six games. He is back now, predictably has struggled, uh, and he's got to find a way into that Toronto lineup that is humming along. You know, He's hitting in the, I think he's in the five hole right now, isn't the worst spot, uh, but Toronto's second in OPS, tied for second in home runs, also top 10 in RBIs, and Springer's got to... F- work his way into that lineup and not disrupt things as a manager you're always glad that you get a a, a big bat in the lineup but he has been a disappointment uh mostly because he hasn't played uh and, and that's been a disappointment for fantasy fans and jays fans as well that want to see this guy you know how can he impact uh this uh, dominant lineup all right uh, the third headline wandering no more franco is home as it seems wander franco finally uh, gets called up uh, by the rays and he goes deep in his debut i was watching the major league baseball network that day before his debut and i can't remember who they who said it but he, they said he just he will be the best hitter in the rays lineup right now like like today he's already the best hitter uh, i i haven't followed the rays enough i know that he's been ranked the top prospect in major league baseball for the past three years if you're selling a team in fantasy baseball and you have studs target this guy in a deal and if you're in a keeper league and your keepers aren't bona fide studs go and grab him now like that are the, those these are the players that uh, a fantasy foundation uh, can be built on so uh this is a guy to definitely to watch because he's entertaining uh, but watch for in your fantasy leagues as well. How about uh, Shohei Otani getting even more versatile? Good news if you're in CBS Fantasy and maybe some other leagues, but Otani now qualifies in the outfield thanks to his five appearances, four in right field, one in left. It might be tough for him to be a fantasy MVP because he's split between pitcher and hitter in a lot of leagues, but he very well could be end up the AL MVP because of his uh, versatility and, and, and how well he's going. And uh, he was on the bump again yesterday. And finally, um, this is an opinion. I don't know if you'll agree, but uh, Salvador Perez has taken over the mantle as best fantasy catcher. The Royals backstop is he's taken it from JT Real Muto, who I think was. Uh, he leads in home runs with 18, RBIs with 47, has a wide lead in both, OPS of 852. The only concern would be strikeouts. He leads all catchers uh, with 74, but he's hitting a lot of bombs right now, and I think he is now the best fantasy catcher in Major League Baseball. So where do you want to start? You could chime in on any of those things or uh, just a few of them. Uh, where do you want to go? Well, let's, uh, I'm going to save the best for last, you know, so let's talk about Otani, the more versatility, uh, the fact that he's now qualified into the outfield, he's not just a utility bat, you can slide him around, you know, Dino, we just call this show the positional versatility <laughs> podcast, yeah. it's it's so important, it's so important for your lineup, you can get more guys in, uh, but even, even more to your point about talking about Otani being an MVP, he is the MVP if he's healthy. Like, I mean, Vladdy Jr. for sure is having an MVP year. But until Vladdy Jr. gets on the mound and, and shoves every sixth day or whatever Otani's doing, it's just not the same. 
Like if he does this for three years, he's the MVP for three years. Not in fantasy though. That, in in real baseball, he will. Yeah. Unless yeah. unless you can no. unless you can get both his pitcher and hitting in one, he'll be split yeah. too much in fantasy. But in real baseball, totally. I agree. Totally. And and because of that, Dino, he he may be the fantasy MVP just as a hitter. I think he's ranked fourth in one of my leagues. I mean, he's right there, twenty three bombs, fifty four mm-hmm. ribs. Um, Vladdy right now is the fantasy MVP. So uh, really cool year for Vladdy. Uh, but Otani's the versatility, Dino. Great topic. Yeah. Now let, let's let's talk about what's really going on in MLB, the sticky situation. Uh, I got to tell you, MLB is the master of creating stories and having sports talk people trash MLB for whatever dumb decisions they're making, and yet everyone talks about MLB baseball all summer long. I, I don't know if I buy into the lower ratings and less people are interested. The, 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 the amount of people that play fantasy baseball, the amount of revenue they generate on MLB.com, maybe people aren't going to the ballpark as much, but the popularity and discussion topics of baseball has never been greater. The sticky situation incident with Joe Girardi and Max Scherzer, although I don't love how that played out, for baseball... It's perfect because of good publicity. Any publicity is good publicity. So now you've got a a potentially a Hall of Fame manager, a guy that was with the Yankees forever, going after, you know, a Hall of Fame pitcher. This is folklore type stuff and things that we'll be talking about 20 years from now. And then that's what baseball has that I don't think other sports has is that history of storytelling. And this will just be another moment in time of when baseball MLB made a decision to rule on something that we will talk about down the line, 5, 10, 15 years. Do you remember when the sticky tack incident mm-hmm. happened? So now, Dino, we're in the sticky tack era. Right, we're but this is going to have an era. impact. This is going to have an impact on fantasy. It is. And like you said, you alluded to, Dino, there's been 12 guys whose spin rate's gone down 300 rip-ems. Mm-hmm. And that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. So you're right, Dino, hitting is going up. So if you've got some hitters that maybe have been held down a little bit by the dominance of pitching, you know, maybe you're going to get an uptick in that. And on the pitching side of the ball, you better hope your guys aren't the ones that were relying on the sticky tack because if they were, uh, their numbers might be going up. Well, and it's going to be so interesting to watch. Trevor Bauer put out a really good video the other day where he showed just how sticky the ball can get from sweat and rosin, which are two that how are you going to outlaw sweating? You're not outlawing sweating (laughs) and you're not taking the rosin bag away. And he showed how the ball stuck to his hand with just sweat and rosin. So, are, are, are these umpires now, do they now have PhDs in what sticky stuff is? Is there a lab on hand that they're going to rush this off to? Like, I mean, this is just the Major League Baseball. You know what this is? This is karma for Major League Baseball ignoring PEDs in the 90s. And, and riding that success after they canceled the law, they canceled that season and they needed to get it back and they rode the PED long ball to get baseball back and now they're paying for it because they made you know they they why didn't they come out at the beginning of the season and saying we're suspending everybody guys 10 games okay even though they were warned even though i i I don't buy the pitcher's argument they were warned and they still did it it's like the kid that's like oh my dad isn't looking so i'm gonna go and sneak another candy oh he's not looking again so i'm gonna do it and then when he gets caught well you didn't tell me i couldn't do it come on like it's it's childish Everybody, the pitchers for using it, and Major League Baseball for starting to hand out suspensions mid-season are just, they're all looking bad. It all looks bad, but you're right, publicity-wise, people are talking about it. So um, I, 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 guess, I guess it's a good thing, but, you know, I, I, I don't think this, I know there's, there's that saying of no such thing as bad publicity. I kind of think this is bad publicity because I think it makes the baseball game itself look silly. Um, but anyway, let's get on to uh, something great to talk about, and that is the best of bullpens. And you're talking about the Natties in the last two weeks. The Nationals, Dino, um, that that NL 
East is up for grabs and, and bullpens and home runs matter. And with the rate that starting pitchers aren't able to go deep into games, if you have a bullpen and they're, and they're, they're working well, um, you're going to pick up games here as we get into the summer. So let's take a look at the Nationals the last two weeks. They've got a, a, a hold holder juggernaut. That's, that's your type of guy, Dino. You're all about the holds. Yes. Tanner Rainey, five and two-thirds with the save and six Ks, four holds. He's giving up less than a base runner per inning. The ERA is, is almost irrelevant because he's pretty much lights out. Um, we'll move on to Paolo Espino. <laughs> uh, eating the third innings with a win and seven Ks. Again, uh, a whip of less than one um, and, a, and a minuscule ERA. So he's been dominant and reliable, which every manager will tell you, a reliable bullpen helps you keep your job. Um, the next guy up, do you know, is Kyle Finnegan. Uh, the ERA is a little bit high, and, and that's because of a bad outing, you know, that can really torture relievers' ERA. Um, but he has been a, a guy that they can count on to come in and get strikeouts. He's learning a little bit about how to compete at the big league level and, and how to get it done consistently. But it's a big-time arm, um, six and a third innings over the last two weeks. He's got eight Ks and four holds. Um, so they're looking for a little bit more consistency out of Finnegan. Uh, but as the third option of a bullpen, you know, kind of mid, mid-inning, uh, he's, he's been successful. And then at the back end, a, a guy that I've had in fantasy baseball, Dino, and I, mm-hmm. I absolutely love this guy. If I were managing a team, I'd love to have a left-handed closer like Brad Hand. Um, he's done it over and over again for years, and he's back to his, his old tricks again. Uh, ten and a third innings over the last two weeks, which is quite a big, big workload for a, a closer, a back-end guy. Um, he's got two wins, six A's, ten K's, and then the uh, the double matching dominance on the ERA <laughs> below one and the WHIP below one. So right now, the Nationals have a chance to get her going. Um, and, you know, kind of moving just off the the bullpen. Josh Bell for the Nationals looks like he's heating up. Um, you, they've got Juan Soto, Trey Turner, they've got pieces. So if that bullpen, um, can bridge, bridge the gap here, uh, from some of the starters that, that aren't able to last, they got a chance to come back in that wide open NL East. Yeah. Brad hand is a stud. That's why he's on my fantasy team in the prospects league. I'm surprised he's only owned, uh, or he's only, well, I guess that's percentage of started, not owned, but. Uh, he's only started 89% of the time. Uh, I thought this guy would be in, into the 90s like some of these guys are. Um, but, yeah, he has been uh, absolutely dominant. He's been a, he's been a solid fantasy contributor uh, for quite a long time. You know, it's me and you going head-to-head this week in, in our uh, fantasy league, right? You're, you're so lucky. Uh, the other day I had Charlie Morton in my lineup, and then for some reason he wasn't. I don't know. Sometimes I get um, messed up with the uh, set your lineup for the whole week and it pushes a guy down, right? Like, you got to be really careful. So I missed out on 11 Ks, no earned runs from Charlie Morton the other day. So there's your gift. There is your gift right now. That is. You know, I I, I can. Danger. I know. I I can afford to, uh, seeing as I have a 19 game lead on you right now, uh, sitting first. Cy Young and the Restless is sitting on top right now, overtaking Moneyball. But as we know, it's a long season, and you could make up a lot of ground in in these in these baseball leagues where you know there there could be a big swing. You know, you could literally uh, go you know 12 and 0 in the week and and shoot up into second or first place, which which kind of makes it uh, pretty exciting uh, with that stuff. Okay. It is uh, it's, it's quickly becoming my favorite uh, segment on the show. It is time for you to enter Baseball Thunderdome. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. You be cocky and arrogant, even when you're getting beat. Two men enter, one man leaves. Addiction? Yes, prediction. Hey, and right now, I've got two men. It's serious. All right, are you ready? It's been a while for you since you did Baseball Thunderdome. The the last little while I was doing, like, historic players. Like, last week I did Denny McLean versus Bob Gibson, the two MVPs from 68. 
the week before I did Ruth versus Gehrig. Uh, and you know what? The cool thing is in the Ultimate Fantasy League Baseball, we are going to have that Legends League where you will get to see Bob Gibson pitch against uh, Babe Ruth. How about Satchel Page going up against Babe Ruth? Because we are looking and we are talking with all kinds of baseball leagues, past, present, and future. So that's where you can have this actual sort of baseball Thunderdome. But here is what you're going with today. We're going with current day National League pitchers, both around the same age. One from the Brewers, one from the Giants. Brandon Woodruff, Kevin Gaussman. Who are you going with? Baseball Thunderdome, two players enter, one man leaves. What's your pick? Do you know I've I've had Brandon Woodruff. I tried to get him this year and, and didn't obviously pull the trigger soon enough in the draft. He's having a dominant year, and, and the Milwaukee Brewers have a two-headed monster, and he's one of them on, on their pitching staff in their rotation. Sliding over to Kevin Gausman, uh, a former first round pick. A guy that has all of a sudden, well, maybe not all of a sudden, but he has really blossomed here over the last year, two, three years, and turned into that stud ace that you know he was projected to be mm-hmm. uh, when he was a young arm. I'm going to make this real quick and easy, Dino. I'm going with the guy I've got in fantasy baseball who is surprising the baseball world with his dominance, and that's Kevin Gausman. Gausman mm-hmm. and the Giants, I think, are the story of the National League right now. His, he's anchored that, that pitching staff, and the fact that the Giants are surprising everyone and, and continuing to do it with that record is because they have an ace at the top of the rotation, sucking up big-time innings like the old-school days, going out there, throwing seven innings every seven, eight innings every time out, which saves their bullpen, which means – Starter three, starter four, starter five have the ability to be backed up with healthy, fresh arms. And conversely, do you know, we're watching the Blue Jays go through that bullpen merry-go-round because Mm -hmm. their starters can't go deep enough that guys are getting worn out. You know, if I was Rafael Dolis, I'd ask for an extension right now because they're going to blow him out. Uh, And he's, he's stepping up for the ball club. So the life of the reliever, man, and Dino, like the, they're a dime a dozen. If you throw hard and have some success, you're going to get used and your shelf life short. So I'm going with my guy, Kevin Gausman. You know, I had him, you know, you know, as a rook, like as a, as a prospect, and this was many years ago and, and, you know, kind of gave up on him, wasn't developing as fast. And uh, it's, it's, it's proof that just some guys take uh different paths to get to that uh, dominance because he has, and you know what, the Padres and the Dodgers, every time they play something crazy happens, but you're right. The Giants leading that division of those two teams is uh, is pretty incredible, and I hope Jack Cookson uh, doesn't hear that at all. All right, uh, we are going to get into waiver wire wins and more right after this. This is Full Count Fantasy Baseball. You ought to get the ball around the end. Presented by Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports. You lolly get your way down to first. Get in the game where you own the game. You lollygag in and out of the dugout. Do you know what that makes you, Larry? Lollygag. Lollygaggers. No lollygagging for you guys last night. 24 runs for the Evident Prospects. Uh, they'll play again tonight in uh, Sherwood Park. Uh, you can get some uh, tickets. Uh, well, I, maybe they're sold out already. I know you guys have uh, oh. restrictions. So uh, tickets at the website still then available. Yeah, yeah, right near the right near the cusp of a sellout here. All righty. After July first, uh, a lot of those restrictions are going to be lifted, and uh, everybody will get to see some baseball. This show, Full Count Fantasy Baseball, is part of the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network, your one stop fantasy sports shop. We are building something all fantasy fans are going to love, and we're already uh, building it. Uh, we've got some great shows already, and looking for quality programming to join us. Reach out if you're interested in being part of the rotation, whether it's daily, monthly, or even weekly that your show is. If you talk about fantasy sports of any variety, we would love to chat with you. Email us, ufsn at uffsports.com, or give a follow on Twitter at ufsnetwork. Uh, For more information on how you can 
own the game and you can check out more details at www.uffsports.com i i know this is something uh that you're gonna love and get involved as uh, particularly as a as a scout in uh, the ultimate uh fantasy league baseball we have franchise auctions uh october 26th to november 7th you might know those dates as during the world series and then play begins next spring. By the way, our UFAFL, our American football auctions, are live in Vegas July 16th to 18th and a big production on the following Sunday. So very, very soon you're going to find out just how big this is already getting. All right, dude, let's get into some waiver wire wins. And I'm going this week with uh, Nate Pearson of the Blue Jays. He was dropped for some reason in our league, you know, I, and and I know the reason why. The team that dropped him is is on the cusp of, uh, you know, they could win it all this year. They needed to get some healthy arms. Nate Pearson was sent down, and then um, you know started pitching pretty well, now has the groin injury. But for me, a team that's on the looking up, I'm looking at next year. So I grabbed Nate Pearson, signed him to a three-year deal because I'm pretty sure within the next three years, Nate Pearson is going to be pretty good. Uh, dominant in his last two AAA starts, 11 innings, uh, just five hits, two earned runs, and nine strikeouts. Um, well, pretty good anyway. Now he's on the shelf with a, with a groin injury. But again, I'm not concerned about this year. I'm concerned long term uh, for Nate Pearson, and that's why when I saw him on the waiver wire, I'm like, this. You know, that's what you do when you're a team that's not going to compete. Kelly McCrimmon of the Vegas Golden Knights told me when we talked a while back. Middle is death. You're either competing to win or you're rebuilding. And so I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it this year, so I'm going hard for next year, and that's why I picked up Nate Pearson uh, of the Blue Jays, who's who's in, in the minor leagues. Tell me about Miles Straw, unless you want to chime in on uh, Nate Pearson. Well, yeah, you know, I hope Nate Pearson can find a way to stay on the field for an extended amount of time because uh, lightning bolt for an arm and, and Blue Jays and, and – yeah, you know, I follow the Blue Jays being here up in Canada. I'd love to see him be able to just do it over and over and over again. And, and if you put him with Manoa and with Ryu, uh, you've got a heck of a pitching staff there. So, uh, But let's talk about Miles Straw, Dino. I'm telling you, we've got to change the name of the show. We've got a double designated player. Um, it's a waiver wire win because of that. Um, shortstop is is not traditionally a, a super deep offensive juggernaut of a position. So in a in a 10, 12, 16 team or even 30 team league, uh, the more teams in your league, the more value Miles Straw brings to the roster because of the dual designation. But the fact he could slide into shortstop, if there's any issues with your shortstop, this is a guy that, that fills up stack columns. He's going to bring speed. He's going to bring stolen bases. There's doubles in there. Um, he's got a little bit of pop, and, and over the last two weeks, he's ran a couple balls out of the ballpark. You know, he's not going to be a 30-plus home run guy and, and maybe not even a 20 home run guy, uh, but he, he's got the potential to be a 35, 40 double guy, mix in some triples. Those are big-time fantasy points for your OPS. And, and like I said, stolen base potential of, of – Really, he could lead the American League in stolen bases, not this year, but as he grows. So uh, you might catch lightning in a bottle with a, with a guy like Miles Straw. Right now, he's swinging it. Um, so if you're looking for somebody that can fill in in the middle at the shortstop position and pick up some time in the outfield, Miles Straw, I think, is your guy. All right, and uh, in an organization that loves to hit balls, the Astros are leading a lot of offensive categories uh this year all right let's slide over to the national league east uh, as you dive into top three in the division and uh you're looking at some pretty uh impressive uh uh power or, or, or outfielders here um especially kyle schwarber i mean this guy has uh he's just blossomed like he's just like shooting out of a cannon and actually i saw him on mlb network they were taking credit because they were like hey since you were last on this show you, you've like you know just exploded so mlb network is taking credit for kyle schwarber's you know fantasy prowess this year yeah, what great timing for the MLB Network, eh? Let's let's <laughs> review all the players they've had on there and make sure yeah, that right. every one of them went on fire, right? Yeah. Um, Schwarber, Schwarber was a first rounder, highly touted hitter. Uh, there's a there is, he, you can get him out. There's a hole in the swing. Um, 
perhaps right now he's figured that out and, and pitchers are making mistakes and, and he's making them pay. It's funny that the top three in the division right now, um, a couple of names that you maybe wouldn't expect to be on that list over the last two weeks, but Kyle Schwarber's got nine home runs in the last two weeks and a, a 1290 OPS, which is, you're, you're talking Barry Bonds-esque right now. So Schwarber's on fire. Um, he's hitting in the middle of that uh, Nationals lineup. There, there's so much power in that lineup that if they start clicking, hitting's contagious, as the Edmonton prospects saw last night. Hitting is contagious, and he's on fire. So um, he's still available in some leagues. Most leagues he's not. Uh, if he is, you better snap him up right now because he's mm -hmm. on fire. The next player is a guy that's been available not been available i've picked him up and dropped him this year in both my leagues adam duvall he's back on a tear he's back on a hot streak he's got seven home runs in the last two weeks he's got a couple of stolen bases as well yeah i think there's a chance he he ends up sticking in the middle of that miami lineup here for for the near future and, and by that i mean the next couple of years i think he's finally found a home i think they've given him that opportunity um, over the last two weeks, he, he's been a fantasy juggernaut. His, his OPS is over 1,000. And like I said, the seven home runs coupled with the, the two stolen bases makes him a dual threat guy. And, and when you're picking up a stolen base here and there throughout every week by the big guy that's hitting mm -hmm. in the middle that really doesn't steal a lot of bases, those can add up. And, and that could be the difference in you winning your week or, or not. So Adam Duvall right now, he's number two in the NL East outfielders over the last two weeks. And then let's talk about, you know, a perennial MVP candidate, which is funny that he's just not the leader uh, every two weeks in, in, <laughs> in, in baseball, for that matter, but the NL East. But Ronald Acuna, I'm going to tell you right now, Dino, he's having a bit of a down couple weeks. Yeah, he's only got, he is. He's only got two home runs. So yeah. you know what Acuna does? He turns on the wheels and he starts yeah. stealing more bags, picking up four stolen bases. A 9-11 OPS is... If, I mean, if you do that over your career, you're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, and, and Acuna is having a bit of a down go here. But you know what? I think the Braves are starting to heat up. I think the Nationals are starting to heat up. That The NL East is, is kind of a mirage division because there, there's teams at 34 and 36 hovering around 500. But that's a, that's, a, that's a gauntlet of a division, man, with all the arms there, with DeGrom in that division, with Scherzer in that division. The Braves have a bunch of young arms. Um, yeah, NL East is a fun division to watch. Ronald Acuna rounds out the top three in division. NL East, outfielders over the last two weeks. Well, and he had a down week with home runs and, and RBIs, or two weeks, as you mentioned. But he had just as many hits or more. Uh, and just as many runs or more as, as the as the other two guys, and then he chalked up the stolen bases. So that's what those good players do. Okay, the power's not here right now. I'm not driving it to the alley. I'm not driving in runs. I'm going to create runs. I'm going to steal bases and then score a run. And that's you know where your best fantasy players may, la might lack in one area. Uh, they can they can pick up uh, in, in another area. So that's massively important when you have a guy uh, that is not just looking at one or or sort of uh, two categories at all. We're going to take a look at the future of baseball and prospect peak right after this. This is Full Count Fantasy Baseball. All right, you guys, let's listen up. We won a game yesterday. We win one today, that's two in a row. Presented by Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports. We win one tomorrow that's called a winning streak. It has happened before. Get in the game where you own the game. So let's see some hustle. Let's jack it up a little. I got a feeling things are about to turn around for us. Was that you last night? Were you giving him the Lou Brown? Like, we won a game. We won, win one tomorrow. Uh, but you guys have actually started the season pretty well. Like, you guys have started uh, with, with a few wins already. Yeah, we're we're sitting at three and one, Dino. Uh, we've had we had a, a crazy game in Sylvan Lake where we were we were up ten five, and and in that game they hit three home runs off us a three run a two run and a two run, and they actually hit a two run shot off our closer who we brought in in the eighth inning to tie it. So it was ten ten. So we ended up going into extra innings, and and our league made the decision we've done a modified extra innings. 
Yeah. I'm um, similar to MLB, but as, as per baseball Canada international rules. So in extra innings in the WCBL this year, uh, runners start at first and second and there's none out. So there's runs going to get scored in the 10th inning. And, and if it continues mm. to progress, you know, you start with that situation again. So uh, we went into extra innings, uh, luckily for us. And, and fortunately for us, we were able to put a couple across and, and we still let, we left our closer out there. He went multiple innings and, and he shut the door in, in the bottom of the 10th. So we were able to get that win. So nice. it's been a good start. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, can't wait for the game tonight. By the way, Full Count Fantasy Baseball is presented by our title sponsor, Ultimate Franchise Fantasy Sports. You will not find a more realistic fantasy platform out there. In our NHL league, or our UFHL, which mirrors the NHL, we have a uh, playoff series. So you know how most fantasy leagues end uh, like a couple of weeks before the regular season? We go right to the last second of the regular season, and then we have a playoff draft where the playoff franchises pluck from the non-playoff carcasses left scattered across the UFHL landscape, and then you build your playoff team and go for the Klein Cup. Same thing will happen in baseball, football, golf, basketball, and any of the other sports that we have going. And these are also going to be NFTs. We're going to get real-life players minted into NFTs, and then you have their fantasy rights, a, a chance for everybody to have some fun. With UFFS, you own the game. UFFSports.com is where you can find more of the information you crave. All right. Prospect peak this week. I'm actually going with the guy uh, that I, I featured last week just because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about him. It's uh, Shane Baz of the Rays, and he's a starting pitcher who was mostly at double A and just recently moved up to uh, Durham triple A. 6-2-190, nine innings in AAA so far, two earned runs only, seven hits, ten strikeouts. He er, uh, allowed just nine earned runs in A in 32 innings pitched and had 49 Ks. I think he had a, a walk, a, a strikeout to walk ratio of 49 to 2. And we just saw Wander Franco get called up. I wonder uh, at some point if Shane Bass is going to make uh, an appearance in Major League Baseball. And, and just quickly on that front, um, the, the the Rays always seem to have these dynamite prospects, but Wander Franco comes up the other day, smokes a home run in his debut, three RBIs. I mean, that was a pretty exciting day for baseball in general, was it not? You bet, Dino. Uh, I mean, the baseball world's been talking about Wander Franco since he was 16. Um, so now he he's he's climbed the ladder. He's in he's in the big leagues. He's not going anywhere. Uh, this guy is as exciting a player as he's like, he's like a Fernando Tatis. Um, you know, he's going to challenge those guys that are atop all the fantasy boards and stat columns, as well as just regular baseball fans. Wander Franco is that guy. Um, the Tampa Bay Rays, man, I, I wish they'd move to Montreal and call <laughs> them the Expo. So, cause they're, they're so much like the Expos. They just have these guys that they continue, continue to produce and develop. And that's what that's what I loved about the Expos. They always had guys. They were always bringing up young players. They had such a great minor league and uh, farm system feeding frenzy up to the big league. So uh, Wander Franco's unreal, man. It, it's going to be fun to watch him. And, and they've got more guys coming. Dino, like you said, Shane Baz. They've got Vidal Brujan coming. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the. They might have a, a ten-year middle infield. Uh, you know, at the age of 20, 21, 22. Uh, coming up, so Wander and Vidal Brujun are going to be turning double plays and hitting bombs in that lineup for years to come. That's awesome. So tell us about the uh, prospect you're going with this week from the O's. Yeah, I figured I'd touch in on this. Um, you know, Adley Rushman is 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 have, was was anointed the next Buster Posey, mm. um, and I'll tell you what: if you're the next Buster Posey, that's some high praise because. Yeah. Uh, Buster Posey is, is going to be a Hall of Famer, three-time World Series champion, uh, flat-out rakes at the plate. He's a legit three-hole hitter, and and that's really what they project Adley Rushman to, to end up being as a middle order of the bat. Uh, the Orioles have some of these guys coming, so the AL East isn't going to get any easier for everybody with the Orioles beginning to climb the ladder back up to relevance. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Dino, 
Uh, th this kid, the numbers he put up at Oregon State in the Pac-12 were video game ask. You know, to, to be able to go into college baseball and and face the level of arms that you face coming out of high school because you played as a true freshman um, to to have an OPS over a thousand in, in college baseball at, at that level is pretty special. The on base percentage is what um, I'm really excited about. Uh, that tells you a lot about a, a hitter, his ability to take pitches, his ability to swing at the right pitches, to offer his barrel at uh, hitters' pitches versus pitchers' pitches. And there's a difference. When pitchers make mistakes, we want to be able to get our bat on the ball. Um, we don't want to offer it at the pitcher's best pitch all the time. So the plate discipline that he's shown uh, at a very young age, at a uh, very high level of Division One baseball and, and to where he's at right now in the minor leagues it is why people are excited about him. So Adley Rushman's coming. You may see him at the end of the summer uh, get a call up. You know, Honestly, he's probably a year or two away from someone that, that maybe cements himself, but you never know, Dino. Um, these young hitters are coming up as prepared as ever in the sport of baseball. So he may be able to make an impact later this summer and, and furthermore be able to actually be an impact bat as soon as next year. Smokey, this is not NOM. This is bowling. There are rules. I don't think it taints it. What you talking about, mister? You're crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. All right, when it comes to ruling your league, uh, we want to tell you something that I, you know can make your league a lot more fun, a lot better. Or a rule to live by. Last week I was talking about always have somebody droppable. Like, all you know, always have somebody on your lineup that you're not so attached to that you can't drop. In case you need to stream a two-starter or you need to pick up an injury replacement, don't get so attached to your lineup that you don't think anybody is droppable. And, and you know, Unless you're in, like, a three-team league and you're... your lineup is so good. But my rule for this week that I'm going with is that you should always have a punishment for finishing last. Like, you know, sometimes you can get a draft pick, but other times you should have to stand on the street corner with a sandwich board side that says, I suck at fantasy baseball. Or you have to take out an ad in the paper and say, you know, my, I, you know, I don't know if they, they still even sell papers or not, but saying, hey, I, I think that uh, I suck at fantasy or something. There should be some sort of, like, let's not get cruel and, and unusual here, but you can have some fun with the person who finishes last in, in fantasy. And, and listen, we play fantasy, you know, because why? We it's the camaraderie. You you know, you you chirp your buddies, you you give them the gears, things like that. Uh, that you know, in, in the in the show, the league, like Andre was just mercilessly. He's just like they just they're terrible to Andre. I'm not saying you you go that far because what they did to him was pretty bad. But you got to have some sort of punishment. You got to recognize some sort of punishment like I, i've heard of leagues where the 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 person who wins the league gets to rename the other per i think they stole that from the league but how about that as punishment you get to rename the other person's team oh dude that's a great rule that's a great rule so is that is that particular situation do you know is that the 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 champion gets to rename the last place team yep. Yeah, oh, so the dude. person who wins the league would get to rename whoever finished last. Like, that's a pretty cool uh, punishment. And, you know, they they can change their name back uh, after the next year if they don't finish last. And if they keep finishing last, they're going to have a new name every year. That could solve problems for the for all pro sports in the <laughs> draft lottery. Right. You know, the team that wins the Stanley Cup gets to rename the last place team, so they're no longer the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. The Tampa Bay Lightning <laughs> oh, will be renaming the Buffalo Sabres if they win the Stanley Cup, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude, I love that rule. I love that rule. We should implement it in our league. Yeah, I, I think it could be a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, everybody, uh, you know, and, and it's, you know, the the one league we were in a, ba a football league. Jamie Thomas was going to do rate relegation. Like he was going to kick people out of the league for finishing last. I'm like, oh, that's that's. I love that rule because then you're going to be paying attention all year long. But 
Uh, I like the uh, renaming the team for uh, for last place, um, personally. Uh, okay, let's get to the final thing. What are we going to be watching this weekend? I know you're going to be uh, on the field, and it's going to be 35 degrees, so hopefully you don't need it in Constanza, the jerseys, and they're, uh, they're going to shrink like in, the, uh, in Seinfeld there with the, uh, when George was working for the Yankees. Uh, but when I'm when I'm not out enjoying the free vitamin D that's going to be in abundance in Alberta, I'll be watching the Cubs Dodgers Sunday night uh, Kershaw redemption game. Kershaw Bauer they all got lit up by the Padres this week, and both the Cubs and the Dodgers are trying to track down teams from uh, fr- that are in front of them in their division. So um, you know we we talked about the. The, the National League East uh, being a really fun division. The National League West is going to be awesome if all three of these teams keep it going. And lately, I don't know if the Dodgers are tipping their pitches, but, man, they're getting lit up, especially in the first inning. Cronworth took Kershaw and Bauer deep in the first inning in back-to-back games. When, when, like, what odds would Vegas have given you for that? That's a <laughs> – you'd have made a lot of money if you took that. Although Cronworth's a great player, who does that off Bauer and Kershaw in yeah. consecutive games? In the I'll first tell you inning. What, you know, the, the juggernaut Dodgers are in trouble. They're in trouble. Yeah. And and and, and also let's let's realize that they haven't had Bellinger for a little bit. They haven't had Muncie. They don't have Seeger, and Betts has been sick. So in the last week. They have been banged up. I'm not. I'm not concerned at all with this team. Once this team gets healthy, you put Corey Seager, a World Series MVP, back in the two hole. They're going to be okay. They're. They're. The early on, their bullpen was hurt. Now it's the uh, the batters that are hurt. Um, the only concern I have is this division is so good. They just got to stay in contention until they're healthy. You're right, Dino. Um, that is a fun division. The Padres, the Giants, and the Dodgers. The West Coast. Shoot, dude. With, I'd love to get out there maybe in September to check out some games. I don't know if I'll be able to do that and, and restrictions and all that. Right. But what a great place to head, jump down from Alberta in, into, uh, you know, the uh, Cali baseball scene. That'd be awesome. And you know what? The Angels, maybe, maybe they fight their way into a wild card. Hopefully maybe. they do. I mean, shoot, dude. They got to do something for Mike Trout. The games I'm going to watch, uh, that I'm going to pay attention to this weekend is I really love the Reds versus Braves series. Mm -hmm. Um, There's some big-time offensive players. Your boy, Winker, um, who I'm ultimately jealous of the fact that you have him because I love him just as much as you do, but I don't have him. Um, Jonathan India has been swinging it. Freddie Freeman's been heating up. Um, Austin Riley has been a a stud here over the last month and and a bit for the the Braves and is really coming into his own as as a big league masher, a middle-of-the-order home run guy. Um, you know what? That's going to be a fun series to watch because there's going to be some fireworks on the offensive side, Dino. So I'll, uh, I'm going to be checking out the the Braves at the Cincinnati Reds this weekend. You know, the NL West is interesting. You got three awesome teams at the top, and then the Rockies and and Diamondbacks who are just awful. Like the Arizona Diamondbacks, they are like they're the Cleveland Indians at the start of Major League. That's who the Arizona Diamondbacks are. They're the bad news bears before uh, Kelly, the pitcher, and, and and joined the team, right? Like, they're awful. The Diamondbacks are, you know, they're only worth watching unless you like watching car accidents because an entire nine-inning game is one giant car accident for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So, sorry if you're an Arizona Diamondback fan. All right, Full Count Fantasy Baseball is part of the Ultimate Fantasy Sports Network, UFSN. One stop shop for you and fantasy sports. Email us ufsn at uffsports.com to get in on the fun. One more piece of advice you be cocky and arrogant, even when you're getting beat. And that means it is time to say goodbye, Mr. Blundell. Good luck tonight in your contest in Sherwood Park. Uh, some tickets still available. Check the Prospects website for that. I'll be out there heckling you. Can't wait to watch baseball again. Good luck in fantasy, just not this week because I'm playing you. And one more thing for everybody. Ban the shift. Have a great week in fantasy, everybody. We'll talk to you next week, my man. Good luck tonight. Thanks, d